at the secret place with my lovely bride, my wife, Dr. Noemi. Love, would you greet the folks today? Yes, blessings. Good evening, everyone. We're so happy that you have joined us. We are indeed glad that you have joined us. It's a great time of the year, and uh, it's just so amazing, this weather that we're having. I don't know about where everybody else is, and I understand we're supposed to get some cold weather, but it's almost like spring outside. It's so nice and warm, and uh, it's been so, um, just doesn't even feel like that it's this time of the year. It feels more springish right now, and here we are in the middle of January already of 2023. It's just like, man, time is flying. It has, it? It has. It's just gone. But we're glad you're with us today, and we have something special that we want to share with you today. I want you to be sure and go to our website for our church, Encounter Church Fort Worth. Uh, go out there and check out who all's coming. We don't announce it on here uh, because people watch this again and again, and so it would be weird. People would get confused and think we were having somebody every time this played, but... I want you to go to the website and look and see who's coming this Sunday because we have somebody coming this Sunday. It's going to be a wonderful time. You can check it out on Facebook. You can check it out uh, just different places, right? Yes, we have Facebook. We have our social media on YouTube, also mm -hmm. on um, our website and TikTok and, and our app. Instagram, along with our Encounter Church for Worth app. Yeah, so be sure and and while you're out there just go download the app and put it on your phone and that way you can keep up with us and it will send you little notices and stuff like that or you don't have to have the notices you can just open it when you want to look so we bless you today we're glad you're with us thank you for watching there was a song that I wrote some years ago and I didn't understand why I wrote it because I thought I really trusted God I thought I really knew God I thought I really had walked with the Lord long enough that hey I got this part of my life down but how many of you know that when you think you've got God figured out on a level, he will take you to a whole other Amen. level. Amen. And it will be like, oh my God, I didn't know that there was this much to this whole thing. And so I wrote a little song about trusting in the Lord. And as I was singing the song, <laughs> I kept wondering, why do I keep singing this line over and over and over, God? Why do I keep singing this? And about the time that I kind of got the song finished and had taught it to a choir or two and some uh, music departments and we were using the song, that's when my son died. Then all of a sudden, this song made a lot of sense. And I said, now I know, God, why you told me to sing this song again and again. And the song says, I will trust in you. Trust in him. 
You know, it's a wonderful thing to be able to trust in God and let him know that we do trust in him and to walk with him in all his ways. And, um, you know, sometimes our own understanding really, really gets in our way, doesn't it? Right. We get, <laughs> and we limit um, to be able to really have the full concept of what God is doing, because we know as human beings, we're not able to see the big picture. Right. And so we do, we limit some, even our own selves, we get ourselves in the way. That's really true. And um, especially when we try to follow our own wisdom. Right. I think I've got my own wisdom. I think I've got my, you know, but um, it's really important that we trust God and that we understand that what he does is for my good. Remember what Joseph told his brothers in Genesis, the 50th chapter. He told them what you meant for evil. And I love the way the New American Standard says it. What you meant for evil, God intended for my good. Sometimes what we think is evil that's coming against us, we think is just all the devil. And we think the devil's got the upper hand. And oh my God, he's just, I'm in this warfare. And the enemy's just showing out. And the scripture says that the pit, the pit that Joseph was in that was intended for his evil by his brothers, God intended this whole thing for Joseph because he knew that it was the pit that was going to take him to the palace and that he would save a whole bunch of people alive. And that's what he did. And so you have to look at everything that you go through and say, what is it that I'm learning from this moment? Right. I got up yesterday morning and I've got a relatively, you know, new truck. It's two or three years old and it wouldn't start. And I'm like, oh, I wanted to get so angry. I wanted to get upset. I wanted to be frustrated, but my truck just wouldn't start. I mean, it wouldn't even make a noise. It, and it's kind of push button, you know, so you, it's not like you can hold the key down and make it go jing, 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 jing or whatever, you know, it wasn't doing nothing. There were no clicks. There were nothing. It just, you push the button and it just blank. Nothing happened. And so I'm like, I wanted to be upset, but I just sat back and I said, okay, God, I'm going to receive this as where I'm supposed to be right now. And I'm going to thank you for it. And I'm going to thank you that I'm not out on the road somewhere in a traffic accident, or I'm not doing something that I shouldn't be doing or going somewhere that I shouldn't be going or whatever else. I want to thank you that I'm right here. And so the long story short, I ended up taking my son's truck and uh, I laugh at my son and my wife both because they're going to, they're going to drive that vehicle till it's on the last fume. And <laughs> so I get in the truck and it has no fuel. Well, I have to go to the gas station. And I decided because I was going to another place that I wouldn't stop at the normal gas station. There was a newer one that was opened up across the way. And I said, you know, I just feel like going over there today. And I get over there and there God meets, uh, has somebody that comes to me that has a need, a legitimate need. And I was able to help someone meet a need, fill their tank up and give them money to feed their family. And I am so grateful. If I had not been on pause, if I had just jumped in my truck and ran, if I had not had to rethink things, call my son and say, hey, I know your truck is here. Is it okay if I drive your truck and take his truck and go fill up with fuel and all of that stuff? Then look, God wouldn't have been able to use me in that moment to help somebody. And I'm grateful that God gives us those moments to help people and gives us those moments to uh, be available for him and his use. So mm -hmm. I want to talk about something, though. Uh, and, and I say all of that just to say, don't, don't, don't get upset with where your life is. Don't get upset with where you are right now. Don't be upset about anything. Find peace in everything and say, God, what is it that you're doing in my life in this moment? Where am I going right now? What is happening in 2023 that I need to be aware of? You know, when we fall into that trap of anger and 
fear and all of that stuff. Our faith doesn't work. We don't make good decisions. We don't do anything from a pure place. We do it from other motivations. Mm -hmm. And so it's not motivated by wisdom. In fact, the Bible says that their anger of man does not work the righteousness of God. And so we have to make sure that we just stay calm, stay in that place of God, what are you doing? Right, and be thankful. We don't know what God yeah. has saved us from. We Absolutely. don't know what he, that we, we cannot perceive everything else that was going around us, but mm -hmm. he can. He knows. So you don't, yes, and you don't know that, yeah, like you said, you, there could have been an accident that he saved right. you from. Um, and yet at that pause, because you went into gratitude, there was someone else that was there in need that you yeah. were able to help. You know, it's it's yeah. beautiful to watch the um, the full picture later on. Yeah. But in that moment, it's not easy. No. Nope. Um, but just the choice of going into gratitude, gratitude. versus frustration. It's you know, so it, important. It definitely moves you forward. Yeah. The Bible says that when we pray, that all of our prayers should be made with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. And so I want to talk about prayer just a little bit today because I just, I want to, I preached a message Sunday, uh, felt like that the Lord told me to tell everybody, I, I woke up and, I, or Saturday, I was working uh, toward the message and I had two, three things going, had what I thought was going to be the message. And I just couldn't really get that, you know, that like, yeah, this is it. I just couldn't get locked in on it. And so finally, I just sat down and I closed my computer, went over and sat in my big chair in the living room and just leaned back and said, okay, God, what are you saying to everybody today? And what do I need to tell your people? Because obviously I'm not hearing you right now and I need to be quiet and still myself and hear what you're saying. And when I got still and when I got quiet and when I released all my thoughts and brought everything captive to the Lordship of Jesus, I heard him say, tell my people, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I don't know what you're on, what journey you're on, but I want to tell you, don't give up. Watch this. Jesus, this is so powerful. One day, Jesus, Luke 18, verse 1, reading New Living Translation, one day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show how that they should always pray and never give up. I want you to just let your head wrap around that for a minute. Just, just wrap around that thought. One day, Jesus, who is God in the flesh, who if anybody knows anything about prayer, it's God. And God in the flesh is standing here telling his disciples, always pray and never give up. Always pray and never give up. In other words, keep praying. I know you prayed that prayer yesterday, but I need you to pray it again. I want to hear you pray it tomorrow. I need you to pray it. And you know, sometimes we say, well, if God knows everything, and if God handles everything, and if God knows how everything's going to turn out, why do I even have to pray? But you know, the reality is death and life are in the power of our tongue. And if we don't give God something to work with, he has nothing to do. And the only way I give God something to work with is by the offering of the fruit of my lips. I have to say mm -hmm. what I want to come to pass. Right, right. Because otherwise, you know, he give us the the beautiful gift of choice. Right. And so within that choice, we get to choose. Yes. That we want to praise him. Yeah. With that choice, we make different different choices. And so we do need to seek him and yes. ask. Yeah. Just like a child asks when he's hungry. Just like exactly. a child has a need. He asks a parent. And so we, we have the gift of choice. And thank God for the gift of choice. Absolutely. And we get to ask. And so in that ask is the prayer, the fervent prayer. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, he says, he tells his disciples, I want you to pray and I want you to pray always. Just pray all the time and never give up. 
And I want somebody to just get your head wrapped around that because this is God telling you, pray and keep praying. I heard you pray it yesterday, but if you don't say it today, then you give me nothing to work with. And there is a spiritual warfare. Here's the thing. You set a lot of stuff in motion. You know, Daniel prayed for 21 days. He prayed for 21 days, the same prayer. And when the when Gabriel finally got to Daniel, he said, I heard your prayer. Your prayer was heard the first day. But it took me 21 days of fighting off the prince of Persia to get through to you with the answer. So when you pray the first time, you put something in motion. But if you don't keep fueling that prayer, if you don't keep saying that prayer, if you don't keep energizing all of that spiritual warfare that's going on, because the enemy doesn't want you to get an answer to your prayer, God heard you the first time, he released the answer. And when he released the answer, it broke out all kinds of stuff that you can't even see. You don't even see, we don't even know. That's why the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So there's something about my prayer that releases this whole setup. Listen to this story that Jesus told him on that day. He said, there was a judge in a certain city. And he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. And a widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me Justin justice in this dispute with my enemy. And the judge ignored her for a while. But finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. <laughs> I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant request. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them and he will grant it quickly. But when the son of man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? Here's the thing. It's not a lack of faith to repeat your prayer. It is faith that repeats the prayer. It is faith that says, God, I'm praying that you raise my friend up. I've been praying for a creative miracle in Van, our friend, who is just in, in a very, very bad way. But I'm telling you, I'm praying for a creative miracle. Well, they released him the other day after they called me saying that he was probably not going to make it through the night about two weeks ago. Now they've already released him into rehab. So I'm praying, praying that God will continue and that I will see Van get up out of that bed mm -hmm. and walk in strength and in power. Because the Lord said, just pray and keep on praying and don't give up because I'm going to answer your prayer. There's something that God is doing for you right now that you can't even see. Mm. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, love. Tell them something because I'm going to look for another scripture here. Well, in, in, the, in the story, I love how it says an unjust judge. Yeah. You know, we know God is a, a God of justice, a God yes. of love. And, you know, if this unjust judge was able to do that for yep. somebody, what more but our loving father yes. who is just who loves us we just get to fight and loves justice and love justice we get to fight for our words we get to fight for what we're wanting yeah. and not give up because if we give up well who, who how bad do we really want that right and so our fervent right. prayers get to stay within faith and yes. believing and in in the perseverance of it yes of continued faith the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth mm -hmm. much it causes stuff to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a place in Matthew 7 where he starts uh, talking about asking. And he says, ask, but keep on asking. Seek, but you will, but keep on seeking. The word that, that we read in the King James, it just says, ask and you will receive what you ask for. That word ask the, in the Hebrew literally means ask and keep on asking until it comes. 
And that's the way that we have to pursue this in prayer. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. The New Living Translation says, keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. I don't know what you're praying for in this season. I don't know what you're believing God for, but I stopped by just for a few minutes here on The Secret Place to tell you, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep praying. Don't think that it's a lack of faith that you don't have what you've been asking for. Because Jesus told his disciples, he said, you need faith. He said, you want me to increase your faith? You don't need a lot of faith. All you need is just a little bit like a grain of a mustard seed. Mustard seed. And he said, if you have that much faith, you could speak to the mountain and tell the mountain to be removed and cast in the sea and it would do it. That's all the faith it takes. It's not a lack of faith that you don't have what you're asking for. It's that we don't stay persistent in our prayer. We don't stay persistent again toward the things that we need. You know, if your mother was on her deathbed, dying with cancer of some sort or some crazy disease, would you not beseech the Lord and stay there until he answered you? Call on him until something happens. Call on to him till the situation shifts and turns around. That's what this is all about. Ask, but just keep on asking. There's something about persistency. Right. And it just, just, you know, I think of the games, um, we're watching football on, on Monday night and the persistency of these football players Yeah. that no matter what they run for that extra yard, you know, that they want to get to be able to get additional points going forward. And you, can you imagine they give up right there? We call it the 99 right. yard, you know, <laughs> giving up right in the midst of before they step right. into their breakthrough. Right. That could be the determine, determining factor right. of being the winner. Yep. And so we just get to seek even more because we're asking God. Um, it's exercising that muscle of prayer, persistent prayer, consistent, committed, right. because we know that God is a just God and he will provide. He answers yes. prayers. We have examples after examples of how many times he has answered prayers. Right. And so we just get to be able to step in into that and lean into that yeah. and not give up. I not mean, it was up. just such an in on time message on Sunday, mm -hmm. not to give up because we're coming from a place of complacent, being complacent after yes. COVID. And so it's like, what's next? What do we do? What, what do we move into next? Right. And many people in certain, in certain aspects give up, whether it's exercising or in whatever areas in their life. Right. And yet we just get to pray fervently yes and be consistent and, stay and, consistent and stay consistent and and just not give up exactly it's like i told the church sunday that i went to the gym uh the first <laughs> week of january and man i couldn't find a machine to work out on but you know what i go in there today and there's like 15 people in there at lunch i mean there's there's just nobody there uh it's people have already given up they got sore and that's that's the biggest deterrent a lot of times people go hit the gym a little too hard and then they get really sore and then they don't want to go back right it's like man i can't take all this soreness i'm not going to go back and the reality is is that if you stay in there the soreness eventually goes away and you can work that soreness out drink lots of water and do some lighter exercises and as you do all of that next thing you know you're working out all the time and you don't ever get that kind of sore again. Yeah, you can get sore, but you're not going to get that kind of sore. And that's the whole thing with anything that we do, anything that we do in God, that we work ourselves to a place of maybe soreness or we, we pray until we felt like we prayed something all the way out. And, you know, it's good. Have you ever prayed until you just pray? And you pray that thing through and you feel that release and you're like, man, I know that that got heard today. I know that that got answered, but I want to go back the next day and just knock on that door one more time and say, hey, God, 
I want to remind you of that prayer that I prayed yesterday. And thank you for that great feeling of faith. Thank you that you encouraged me in that moment. While I don't see the answer, I know it's on its way. And I thank you. And I just want to fuel the fight in the heavenlies. God, whatever's going on, if there are angelic beings fighting to get the prayer through to me, the answer through to me, then I just want to fuel them up today. And I want to thank you, God, because I know that the answer is already on its way. And I declare victory in this situation, victory in this season, victory in this day. And I declare that my friends are healed they're healthy, they're well, their bodies are strong. God, I declare that Van is going to get up out of that Amen. bed. I declare, God, that he is going to be strong. He's going to be a testimony for your goodness to all of us. See, when we begin to pray that way, what it does is it builds our own faith. The Bible says that you pray in the Holy Ghost. And, you know, praying in the Holy Ghost is sometimes not speaking in tongues. Sometimes it's just in the spirit of the Holy Ghost that you begin to pray and you begin to pray. And as you pray in the Holy Ghost, we build ourselves up, the Bible says, on our most holy faith. And there's something about just building your faith up. The more I pray, it's, it's almost the opposite of what some would think. Some would think if you got to pray that prayer over and over and over, well, there's no faith in that. You know, somebody, in fact, an older man told me one time when I was praying, he said, I asked God one time for a thing and I'll leave it alone. And I said, do you get your prayers answered? He said, sometimes. And I said, sometimes. I said, oh, I'll talk to a God that answers all the time. <laughs> I said, but I want to an answer. And sometimes my answer may not be what I wanted, right. but I'm going to pray until he says something. I pray today that you're encouraged to keep going Wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, just keep praying, keep believing, keep mm -hmm. trusting, keep sowing. You're going to reap. Just the scripture says, just keep doing what you're doing. Go check out Galatians 6 and 9. Just keep doing what you're doing because you're going to reap in due season if you faint not. In other words, if you don't give up. I bless you today. I love you. Bishop Oliver, Dr. Noah Me. Bless you.